This episode of After Dark is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to support the Boss Rush Network and our family of podcasts, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash boss rush network. Thanks for your continued support. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative podcast here for the Boss Rush Network. I am your one and only host tonight, Corey Gehrig, and uh, everybody else is uh, not here because I'm recording late on Sunday, Um, partially because I can't sleep, but also kind of wanted everybody to have the week off and like most things i overthink everything and uh thought that you know if i asked people they would get annoyed uh not that they get annoyed i just you know that's how my brain works and that's what we're going to talk about tonight is how my brain works um so yeah i i didn't ask anybody because i wanted everybody to have the week off and i didn't want to take that away from anybody and so uh, what we're going to do tonight is kind of have a 25-minute solo show. So if you are interested in hearing me speak, uh, keep it on. If you're not, then uh, sorry. Uh, there's always next week, I guess. I don't know. Uh, also, like, we're kind of missing episodes, and I'm trying to get ahead. Uh, is you know Those are kind of like the three reasons why I'm recording so late here. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, I um, I want to, first of all, thank everybody for supporting us on Patreon if you do so. Uh, if you do not support us, you can get this uh, this show and other shows early uh, for only a dollar a month. Uh, you don't have to, though. Uh, as always, your listenership and your YouTube subscription is enough for us. So if you want to subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, leave us a nice rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts, uh, that would be great. That would really help us out a lot. Uh, you can check out all of our content on bossers.net and uh, including all of our PAX coverage, which is very exciting. Uh, I'm recording this the week, the weekend after PAX, so like a week later. And, uh, you know, it's it was fun seeing everybody. It was really fun recording on site. Uh, I learned a lot about what to do and what not to do in terms of uh, recording stuff. So that was fun. Uh, also, my camera just just needs to go in the dumpster. It's very old and very not. It says high def on it, but it is not high def. Uh, so, I mean, th- this webcam is, you know, <laughs> a USB webcam is better quality than this dumpster fire I took to pack. So next time, maybe I'll just take this. Um, but yeah, uh, PAX was super fun. I just kind of want to take this uh, time to talk about my experience at PAX, not the games and stuff, because that's not what this show is about, right? This show is about everything else other than games. At least we try to make it that way. Uh, but more of the experience of of meeting my friends for the first time. And then the second part will be about uh, mostly how uh, they always talk about post con depression. And um, the second part of it's going to be about how I am having a really hard time uh, with that. Uh, And so yeah, if you're ready for a uh, get a sappy episode, get your get your tissues out and uh, you know for your eyes, not anything else dirty. Laron's not here, so we're not having that type of episode tonight. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Pax was so much fun getting to meet everybody. Uh, it was it was a surreal experience um, because we usually look at each other in these you know little boxes on. Uh, on these podcasts and you know, you never really know who's listening and who's not and uh, who's a part of it. And, and you know, you, you 
kind of assume certain things, but you're never quite sure. And so, uh, you know, it was very, very surreal and very heartwarming to be in a place where it felt like it just felt very comforting in a way, which usually when this kind of stuff happens for me, I just kind of like not comforting. It's like the complete opposite where I'm just an anxious, nervous wreck the entire time. Uh, but this time it was not that. So I'm very grateful for that. Uh, you know, flying on a plane by myself is not something I do often, uh, not something I really like to do, uh, by myself. Uh, I don't really like to fly at all. So that was, uh, anxiety inducing. Um, but yeah, meeting everybody like, you know, I definitely knew who I was going to be friends with and who I was, and you know, kind of had this thing of like, not who I wasn't going to be friends with, but you know, like you build these certain online relationships and you kind of know where these directions are going and people that you work with versus people who you would consider friends. And I honestly did not think I was going to come out of this considering every single person there a friend, right? Um, obviously, I've met Ed before and on our old YouTube channel, you can go over there and see Ed and I do some dumb YouTube stuff and uh, Let's Plays and unboxings and podcasts and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so, I mean, Ed's really the only person I've ever met in person. Um, so meeting Pat and David and Stephanie and Mary and Cordy for the first time and, and really like not just like meeting them, but really getting to know everybody um, was really a really great experience. Um, I really kind of forgot what it was like to have real life friends because I don't have many or any uh i mean i have you know a couple people that i would consider real life friends but like some of them i haven't seen for months or even years at this point and so i don't know how much of a friend i mean always going to be friends but you know what i mean uh so having having these real life friends and a group of friends was um i was a little like shocked and i didn't really know what to do really right like and and um the overall thing is like i spent a lot of the initial day kind of trying to figure it out and overthink everything and overthink everybody's kind of like friendliness and and you know affection and uh, just talking and, and having conversations with people um, in real life. And I spent the, the next three days overthinking, well, I don't want this to end instead of just enjoying the moment. And so uh, I, you know, that's kind of like the one regret I have about this entire thing, because like, you know, we have plans to do this stuff again, right? But like, you never really know, like, you know, what if people leave? What if, you know, somebody gets another job somewhere? What if people can't afford to go? You know, what if what if something happens to me? You know, like, I really wish I would have cherished the moment uh, a little bit better. Uh, although I I just want to kind of like run through things real quick. Um, you know, I really <laughs> it's funny because the person I least expected to to really bond with was was David, honestly, like, not that like, we weren't weren't friendly. But I think, you know, over the course of the last two and a half to three years, when you only text someone, and only see them a couple times a year to talk about certain things. Uh, sometimes your texts get taken out of context, or like, you know, you're scrambling to text something to get some information and it comes off as rude or mean. And I think our relationship had become somewhat adversarial unintentionally. And so, you know, my the the person I was most nervous to interact with was David because of that. And 
it's never my intention to be that way with anybody. Um, but we actually had some really great conversations. We had some really bizarre bonding moments, uh, and things that we just kind of like, I don't know. It was, you know, that I, I think that my over, over this entire trip, that was my favorite, uh, you know, one of my favorite interactions and one of my favorite, uh, things was, was David and I's kind of bonding over certain things. And, um, uh, you know, I, I didn't expect certain things from David that happened and it was fun and it was exciting. And, uh, you know, like I said, I wish I would have been in the moment more and done more. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, we were, um, it was funny. We were interviewing our friend, uh, Jess from Zelda universe. And like the thing we, <laughs> the thing we bonded over was like, she asked us to pick thirst trap pictures for her on Instagram. And so we, we were like, you know, David went first, which I was shocked that David did it at all, which is the moment I knew I was like, okay, this we're, we're going to be all right. We're going to be friends. Uh, this is funny. And the funniest thing though, is like, there was probably like 10 or 15 pictures that we both flipped through and we both picked the same two which was the moment I knew we were going to be friends forever, I think, uh, in some way. Um, so that was really funny. And, uh, you know, a couple times at dinner, we were, you know, going over things and we have similar ideas and, you know, we want to grow together instead of apart. And that's kind of where we landed on, on boss rush stuff. But, you know, I think David and I kind of became really, really good friends over the course of this, uh, over the course of this trip. And I'm really sad we didn't get like a, you know, at the end of the trip, I kind of took solo pictures with everybody. And then, you know, we all obviously took the group picture on the last day and, and David had to leave early. And I was kind of sad that we didn't get a picture together. Really? I mean, we had the team picture at the beginning and dinner pictures and stuff, but not nothing like, I don't know. I, I kind of missed that, but you know, I think our goal is to go to PAX West at some point. I think our um, goal definitely next year is to go to PAX East again and hopefully do something. I would really like to do something in between uh, with the team. I Again, I don't know how viable it is. We're all over in different financial situations, but uh, this, yeah. Uh, and then the other kind of... Um, you know, uh, you know, Cordy was great. Like she, we bonded over just like dumb, <laughs> dumb stuff. Like, I don't know, dumb things that were happening on the floor and dumb things that were happening everywhere. And it was fun. Like we, we had a good time together and we just kind of, I don't know, every time we were together, we just found a way to make each other laugh. And that was super fun. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it was funny because there was like you know she, she's really big on tiktok and you know i guess adjacently instagram reels and, and and stories and stuff like that and she just set up in the middle of the the convention center with a camera and like made people come over and it was really fun and funny to watch uh certain people kind of interact and uh i don't know we always found a way to laugh and it was fun uh so uh, and then, you know, Mary Helen and I kind of did our thing with, with interviews and, you know, she taught me a lot about, you know, passively really for the most part, but also, you know, kind of aggressively about interviewing people and, and kind of what an interview could and should look like. And I kind of took what, you know, we did with, uh, and Char Gaming, I think is what they're called. Um, they were in the games uh, from Poland booth. And I kind of applied some of that to my Atari interview, and it was great. Uh, and then, you know, another thing was collaborating with, with David on that, where he wrote the article and I posted the video and we kind of did, did the thing. But, you know, Mary Helen taught me a lot about writing and even afterwards uh, kind of bonding over you know haha you're from 
Florida type thing uh, because you know the memes about Florida. Um, so that was that was really fun. Uh, and then, you know, Pat, Pat and I kind of we were buds hanging out with, you know, Major Nelson and all these other people. That was really fun. Uh, Pat really encouraged me to do certain things that I didn't think I was going to be able to do or want to do, right? Like uh, the Giant Bomb, former Giant Bomb team was there from the Beast cast, the old Beast cast, and uh, Pat was there for that moment, and it made me, you know, he made me do it, and I'm really glad he made me do it because I don't know if I would have otherwise. They're just too cool uh, to uh, (laughs) interrupt there you know, kind of walking through the convention center. So, um, yeah. And then obviously Ed is Ed and I don't know, our relationship hasn't really changed in the last eight years or so. So I don't, I don't have anything new to say about Ed, but Ed's just the energy. Ed's the energy in the room. Ed's the positivity in the, in the room. And I don't know what, uh, you know, we would be without him really, you know, I mean, he's the glue that kind of holds us together and, uh, what he, you know, kind of, Oh, I, I don't want to say lax in, uh, but you know, like Ed has some hot takes and so some of them are completely wrong. Uh, so what he lacks in awareness, he makes up for in heart and, uh, We'll never be able to take that away from him. And I mean that in the best way possible. I don't mean that in a bad way. Okay. I, I know that kind of came out bad, but I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean, it in a great way. And uh, I wish more people were like that, to be honest, um, to not care what other people think um, about you and what you say, and you're going to stick to your guns. And that's, that's Ed to a T. And so I, I wish I was more like that because I overly care what everybody thinks about me. And that is also a very terrible trait to have, especially when you are somewhat of a public esque figure in terms of people talking to you and having (laughs) uh, really, you know, when you look up to people, you are usually the fan and people you go to try to talk to like the iron Lords, for example, uh, meeting, you know, Cog and, and Lemon and Chris and all those guys for the first time. It was like, holy cow, holy shit. These are these are people I've looked up to for years. Uh, you know, the last word is why, you know, my Destiny podcast kind of exists. And uh, it's crazy being on the other end of that, when you find a fan that recognizes you and wants to take a picture and talk, tries to talk to you about things. And it was nothing I ever thought I was going to experience in my lifetime. Uh, you know, and and, I mean, we've been recognized before, but not, nothing like nothing at this scale and nothing like real. Right. And so, uh, yeah, it was it was crazy being on that end. Uh, but the one person I guess I didn't get to yet is is Stephanie, and which I think is uh, the person that I think we bonded the most uh, over certain things. And uh, you know, I I always knew Stephanie and I were friends, right? But like, um, it kind of meant a lot. We were talking at one point and she really made me feel better about a lot of things, um, that were going on. And, uh, it was, uh, it was really nice. You know, I don't, I don't want to get into it because some of it is personal and some of it is, you know, things I don't know if I really want to talk about yet, um, in a real way. Uh, but it really helped. And, um, you know, on a short list of, of close friends, um, I, I, she's found a permanent spot on that list and I am forever grateful. Uh, I don't know if she's listening to this, probably not because who listens to their own podcasts? Uh, I most certainly don't, um, except that I have to edit them. So sometimes I do, uh, but I am 
forever grateful for her friendship on certain things just from a from a different perspective i'll say and um it meant a lot you know i mean obviously like ed and i's friendship has has we are super close friends in a way right i mean we are fr- close friends um but stephanie and i are a different type of close now uh and not in a weird way just you know how you have that one friend that you can kind of share anything with and they just will listen and give their advice and talk and if they need something similar you're you give that to them right and so uh yeah i i'll be forever grateful to have a uh you know at least another close friend that um you know, and, and one that I can kind of share things with, uh, like that. So, uh, my interaction at, at PAX East with everybody was incredible. Uh, also you can't, can't forget Grayson, you know, he's, he's always around, uh, met Grayson Morales, our friend for the first time, uh, in person. And he is, uh, he's a really cool dude. Uh, I gotta, I gotta say he's, he just, the nicest guy, nicest friend. He, you know, obviously he knows everybody, but I think it's because he's so nice to everybody that everybody just wants to be his friend, you know, and, um, which is good. That's a good trait to have. Uh, I wish I was that way. I wish I was half that way. Uh, so yeah, meeting Grayson was fun. Uh, met a lot of cool people. So that was kind of like, that was my experience at PAX and it was really fun meeting everybody and having, having a great time with, with friends. Uh, because at the end of the day, like going out to dinner or ordering in or trying to figure out, you know, let's all work on this piece together or let's all kind of talk about this together. And it was, I don't know. I, I, I used the term euph- euphoric at one point and i know that's you that's usually a word used in a sexual way but you know euphoria is like an extreme feeling of of positivity and happiness right that's uh you know and and that's uh that's how i felt and like coming home and I had I haven't felt this way in such a long time, right? Like I <laughs> I came home and realized that these friends of mine reminded me what it was like to be me in a situation like this, right? Not a version of me, not the version that people will, you know tolerate being around not the version of you know business me or you know online me it was they allowed me to be me right you know hugging people and putting arms around people and you know just they allowed me to be myself and I have not experienced that and probably 15 ish years, which was the last time I think I had like a real group of friends. Um, and then obviously like when something happens and your friends go their separate ways because of this one bad thing, right? Like, you know, you lose that. And, um, you know, I was, I was never in like a, uh, you know, not, not to make this a, some sob story, but like, you know, never after that, never really recovering from this one situation and then moving into bad relationship after, you know, a relationship that I was the bad person and then moving into another bad relationship and everything in between, like I was in a bad place. And like, you know, I always attribute this show to like, you know, my wife really pulling me out of a bad place. Um, but the the way I felt there was so happy and so joyous that, you know, when, when you 
have to be a version of yourself. Um, you know, I kind of, <laughs> I've, I've been saying this a lot lately for some reason, like everything in life is a performance, right? You go to work, you perform, right? You perform as the, the, the business version of yourself. You go and, and, and you know, obviously it's not like there's, there's no like strict guidelines to performance, right? But like, you know, you go to work, you perform as an employee at work, you come home, you perform as, you know, this, the, the, the husband or the, or the partner or the dad, or, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, parents, you perform as the son. And it's never really like, as much as you want to say it is, it's never the full version of you, or it's never like even a partial version of you. It's just a version of you that you have, at least in my case, and, and this, maybe this is a bad thing. You know, I mean, some situations I would say it's a bad thing. Some it's just kind of like a thing you do to, you know, kind of, um, in my case, I guess not let people know what's going on <laughs> with you because it, you don't want to burden people with these, uh, things that are happening in your mind and, 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 these things that, you know, you kind of expect uh, people to be annoyed by if you shared them. So you just kind of like tuck it all inside and, and think about it later when you can't sleep or, uh, you know, have the, you know, you, it, you just kind of become this version of yourself that just kind of ignores feelings and ignores how you feel and ignores these, these things that you should be feeling and you know we're gonna try to do some mental health awareness stuff in, in may right and i think by the time this is free may is coming up or i i'm not 100 percent sure when this is coming out i guess this week for patrons so uh but anyways what i'm trying to say is like you become this version of yourself and then you kind of get used to performing as that version of yourself to the point where you convince yourself that that's who you are, right? And and then you go to a place that feels like you belong, and not not like you belong in a in a way like, oh, well, you're a gamer, you should be here, right? I like you're with a group of friends that accepts you for who you are and how you feel. And so like being there, like I was really emotional a couple nights because I was like taking it all in and just, you know, being, and, you know, trying to be more of myself than I have been in a long time. And, you know, the next time we all get together, you know, I was, I was telling, um, someone this the other day, like I'm going to be my, my full self. The next time we go, I'm going to work really hard at trying to be my full self because even that, like what I allowed myself to be ever, you know, myself there where like, you know, kind of you, you kind of start living this life where you have to like feel around, right? Like you feel, have to feel out the situation and feel out how these people are going to react. But like, no, it was like inspiring of like, Hey, you should, you should do this. You should, you should give hugs. You should, you should like lay on someone's shoulder. You should, you know, put your arm around your friends and be, you know, in the moment. And, uh, you know, and, and I used to love doing all that stuff, right? Like we had, like, I used to have like a group of friends where, you know, whether we were dating or not, like you'd put your arm around them or you would, you know, cuddle up with them and not in like a sexual way, just like a, Hey, we are all hanging out in this person's basement. We're going to put on a movie. Let's just all be together. And, and, uh, that's, that's, that's the group of friends I used to have. And, and this really felt like, and, and, you know, I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable by doing that kind of stuff, but like, it really felt like a group of friends that 
wouldn't mind if that happened, you know, and it felt good to have friends that just accepted that as who you are. And like, you know, Oh, I feel a certain way about this. Okay, cool. Great. Oh, I, I kind of like this, 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 and this. Okay, cool. Let's, let's do that. Or let's, let's explore that. Let's talk about it. And it was like, like I said, you, a, a euphoric feeling. And, you know, when I came home, when I came home, um, and I don't want to make this sound like I, I, my wife and kids don't make me happy because they do, but like, I felt and still feel really empty because I let myself out, right? I let myself out and now I have to pretend to (laughs) be this version of myself I've been for so long and I have to like stuff myself back into this, you know, uh, it's like, it's like stuffing all, you know, it's like trying to repackage something that you've opened and it doesn't fit right. Or it doesn't quite go in correctly or some of it. You just have to say, fuck it. I don't know what to do with it. And, and it's been really, it's been really hard to do that. Um, it's been really hard to put that genie back in the bottle in a sense. And coming home, I, I felt really empty and it's been, it's been dark in more ways than one. And I'm not like, you know, I, I've just been feeling the post con depression more than I think most people longer than most people do. And maybe more than most people do. Um, and I wasn't expecting that. Um, and so I guess I just want to wanted to share that with everybody is like, I have some real friends out there, real tangible friends that are amazing people who are not afraid to let you be who you are. And I get that like, you know, and I'm not saying it in the way of just like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't weird to be in a place with, you know, people, (laughs) judgmental people, right? Like gay friends or trans friends or, you know, people of color, those types of friends. And like, you know, as, and that's like the big thing in, in, you know, entertainment right now, right. Games especially is like, you know, the, we're trying to raise the, these people's voices up. Right. And like, but at the end of the day, like when we're all together, we're all just friends. And it was, it was really incredible. And, um, you know, maybe this will be a topic for after dark in a couple weeks or so, but like, um, nobody ever really talks about this, the, the internal kind of emotional and mental struggles of being a, a man, a, a, I guess you would say a traditional straight man with a family and, um, that type of things and how, you know, you're expected to be. And, you know, I'm not trying to make this about that because that's a topic for a different day, but like coming home and feeling that kind of, (laughs) I have to put on this performance again, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's been really hard. It's been really difficult for me to, to be back, um, doing these things. And I, I don't, I don't like how I feel, you know, the other, you know, by the time this comes out, I guess the other day, like I posted this thing that said mental health really hit me hard. Um, and so it's, it's, or mental health really puts you in your place is what I, 
I put out there and it's, it's true. Like this is, this is, this has been one of the surprisingly, one of the more difficult experiences of my life is, is leaving people that I truly, truly care for. Um, and also, you know, at least how I feel, right? Like they care for me and it, it's, it's been really hard. And so I think this episode of After Dark was just kind of like a, a, a spearheaded uh, or a like kind of like a, a, an experiment of something that I think I want to try to do soon and that's like a almost like a feelings journal but outwardly and and hopefully help people kind of come to terms with what they're going through maybe um and i know a lot everybody's going through something right and i'm trying to keep that in mind you know everybody has their own shit everybody's gone through something right and that's um that's that's what I'm trying to keep in mind here. And so like, you know, uh, leaving a group of friends is hard f- for me, right? It might not be hard to other people. It probably isn't that hard for everybody else there. Like, I mean, yeah, you're sad to see them go, but like, you know, a couple days later, you're fine, right? You just text them or call them or whatever. But the way my brain works and the way that everything kind of comes to the surface for me uh, with the some of the mental health things that I've been really struggling with recently, like leaving everybody was extremely difficult for me, right? And um, yeah, that's uh, that was that was really hard. And so I will. I guess I should probably just end this episode uh, because, you know, we've been going for almost 40 minutes at this point, but I just, I just, I I want everybody um, on the, and you know, who's listening to know that like the, the people here who, who do this thing with me, um, are real true friends. And, uh, you know, like I, like I told Stephanie the other day and like, I've told Ed before, like if boss rush ended tomorrow, I would hope that, you know, this friendship is more than just boss rush, right? Like this, this friendship means something to me. Um, and I don't say that to a lot of people because I don't open up to people. It's been a long time since I've opened up to people. Like even it's even really hard for me to open up to my wife, especially this late in our relationship, right? Because it's just like, well, I don't want to burden you with something I probably should have told you nine and a half years ago. Uh, so Yeah. It's uh, it's been really difficult for me, but I am truly grateful to have friends and truly grateful to be able to do this with them. And for you guys out there who are listening. Uh, and having a close group of friends is something that you should not take for granted. Um, I wish we all lived closer. I wish we could see each other on the weekends. I wish we could hang out. I wish we could go out. Um, and, you know, the next time we see each other, we will definitely do all that, you know. Um, I wish we could go see movies together. I wish we could go out to dinner or I don't know what people in their 30s do now. Like, you know, it's <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's kind of where I want to end it. Don't take your friends for granted. Your close friends. Um, because they are the people who are going to mean the most to you in the end. Um, and your closest friends will always be there for you. Uh, 
and I am incredibly grateful to have these friends. And I would, you know, Laron too. I mean, Laron wasn't there, but like, you know, Laron and I have bonded over certain things on our so on our, you know, one on one episodes, and um, I'm incredibly grateful for him too. And I know I haven't mentioned him at all, but this was more about like the Pax experience. But you know, he's been a really great friend to me as well over the years. And um, yeah, so. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I want to thank everybody for listening to me ramble for 40 minutes. If you made it this far, hi, welcome. Thanks. Um, It's been a pleasure to be able to do this. I want to be able to do this more in shorter form things, you know, maybe like 10 minute things. Uh, Because I think expressing how you feel about certain things is important. And sometimes it's hard to tell people, right? Um, like I mentioned earlier, but talking into a camera just seems easier and letting people watch it later seems way easier, even though it's probably the opposite of what you want to do. But, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I appreciate everybody for watching or listening to this episode, this solo episode of after dark. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Thank you for allowing me to talk about friendship and um, having, you know, (laughs) some some probably dark feelings that uh, may be questionable. Uh, (laughs) I'm all right. I'm working through these feelings, Uh, but I'm incredibly grateful for everybody that listens and all my friends. Um, So yeah that's it thank you guys for watching and or listening remember to like subscribe share rate and review wherever you listen or watch or have found this episode check out bossrush.net support us on patreon patreon.com slash bossrush network and we will see you next week goodbye everybody if you want to see how you can become a patreon producer head on over to patreon.com slash bossrush network Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilan, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtra. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network.